Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here with the Decision Maths A-Level video. It's a linear programming video. So what I'd like us to be able to do in this uh, last video on the, the teaching of this topic is to solve a linear pro programming problem requiring integer solutions and we're going to use the vertex testing method. Now, what do I mean by this? Say there's some linear programming pro problem um, and say x, I don't know, is the n number of uh, red cars, cars you want to make, and uh, y is the number of green cars you want to make, and you want to maximise the profit which is uh, equal to, or you want to maximize how many cars you make, which is equal to x add y. Now, clearly, when I find my uh, maximum answer there, it's got to be a whole number, because you have to have a whole number of cars. You can't have 0.2 red cars, for example. So some problems require integer solutions, and it's obvious which ones they are, because they'll be about things that can only be counted with counting numbers or integers. So, for example, a weight of something uh, would would could be decimalized. But on the other hand, if you were counting how many jugs you could make, for example, then that would be an integer. So you've just got to look for that in the question. So let's deal with a, a typical example um, that's already laid out for us as a linear programming problem, and solve it uh, for integer values. So here's the key idea: x and y must be integers. Solve the following linear programming problem. We're maximizing that, so that's our objective function, and here are our constraints. So just as before, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, draw these out. So first one's first. Let's draw out 3x plus 4y is equal to 36. You know that if x is equal to 0, then y must equal 9, and if y is equal 0, then x, on the other hand, must equal um, uh, 36 divided by 3 which is 12 so we can plot 0 with 9 which would be about here and we can plot that with 12 and 0 which would be there and we just fill in the line like that okay so that's the first one the next one is going to be uh, 13x plus 9y is equal to 117. So what we're going to do there is if x is equal to 0, then y is going to be equal to uh, 117 divided by 9, which is 13. Mm. And uh, going backwards, we're going to say if y is equal to 0, then x must be equal to 117 divided by 13, which is 9. So we can plot 0 with 13, which is here, and we can plot 9 against 0 which is here and we could fill that in like that it's a full line not a dotted line so what we're going to do is color that red like that okay so we've done those two now we're going to draw uh, 5y subtract 4x is equal to 10 okay now what I would like us to do is I would like us to write that the other way around so we can use that to find our um, uh, intersection points using uh, a calculator. So I'd like to write that as negative 4x plus 5y is equal to 10. Okay, so if x was equal to 0, y would clearly be 2. And if y was equal to 0, in this case, x would be equal to uh, 10 divided by negative 4, which would be negative 2.5. Okay, so that's kind of outside our range. So let's draw another one. Let's draw something like, uh, I don't know. Let's imagine x was equal to 1. Then y would be equal to, um, it would end up being 10 plus uh, 4 over 5. So it's 14 over 5, which is equal to uh, 2.8, like that. Okay, so we can have that one. And then the last one, 6x. So we're going to draw that there. So 0 with 2. So x is 0 and 2 here. And we're going to draw also um, x is 1 with 2.8. So 2.8 um, would be somewhere here. 
so that's quite difficult to draw so I should really find a better value uh, than that um, could I find a better value it's not obvious that you can find a better value so I'm just going to draw that in just for now like that okay and I'm going to make sure I color that in uh, green Okay, just like that. And the last one, uh, so it's not the last one, we've got 6x plus 5y is equal to 30. So I'm going to draw that in another colour again. So we're going to have uh, 6x plus 5y is equal to 30. And so clearly if x is 0, y is 6, and vice versa, if y happened to be 0, then x would be equal to 5. So you plot 0 with 6, which will be there, against 5 with 0, which would be there. And you draw that with a blue line as follows. And the last one, which we'll do in a, a purple colour, let's say, what are we plotting for the last one? Plotting x equals 2 for the last one. x is 2. Okay, so we plot x is 2 across here which is going to be in a uh, purple colour. Okay, as I went along, I should have uh, highlighted what I want. So the first one is we want below the line. So the first one we wanted uh, below the line here. Uh, the first one was black, so we want below the line, so we're going to shade everything uh, above the line. Uh, the next one was the red one, and we wanted uh, below the line. So we're going to shade everything above the line, so also get rid of all that stuff there. The next one was the green one, and we want um, below the line, so we're going to shade everything above the line, so all this goes as well. And the last one, the 6x one, well, that's the blue one, and we want everything uh, above the line, so we shade below the line, so we're going to shade all this stuff here. And the last one, we want x bigger than or equal to 2, so we want above the line, so we shade below the line. So our feasible region is there. Remember, the whole point of this question is that the x and y you must find must be integers. Now, we know normally that a solution always occurs at a vertex. So either the vertex there, the vertex there, the vertex there, the vertex there, and the vertex there. Now, none of these are at integer values. Okay, none of those are integer values. The integer values are at the following places, and I'll show you where they are. So let me highlight these integer values in an orange pen. Now, given that each two squares is worth one, so that's worth one and that's worth one there, an integer value must be here. This point here is 3, 3. This point here is 3, 4. This point here is uh, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, and 4, 5. This point here is 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, and 5, 5. This is 6, 2, 6, 3, and 6, 4. And this one here is 7, 2, and this is outside it. You can see that's not going to be an integer. You can see just about that's not going to be an integer. Neither is that there, and neither is that. So it's one of these orange ones that the solution lies. Now, how do you find it? Well, you can either okay, do point testing. Or you can uh, use an objective line okay, to find which one of these corners or vertices is the maximum. Now in this case, it happens, I think, that the objective line is probably easiest. We're trying to maximize x plus 2y is a constant. So let's pick x plus 2y as something like 12. If x is equal to 0, y is 6. And if y is equal to 0, x is equal to 12. Okay, so we'll go 0 against 6. So we'll try and draw this objective line here. 0 with 6, which is there. And we're going to draw 12 against 0, which is here. So my objective line would look something like this. Now we're trying to find, we're trying to maximize that. So where's the maximum that's going to happen in this region? So is it going to happen there as a maximum? No, because we improve it here. Is it going to happen here as a maximum? No, because we improve it here. And look, you can just about see that it's going to be at here 
is the maximum. So you can see that one there is going to be the maximum. So you can say, uh, if I call that point A, you can say that the maximum happens at point A. Okay, the maximum happens at point A. You could find point A, but you can see, what you can check is you can check that on that integer value and that integer value, which are the two closest ones to it, to see which one's maximum. So we're going to check nearest integers to A, integer coordinates to A, which are um, it's going to be 4, 5 and 5, 5, which are going to be 4, 5. I'm going to check 5, 5. And clearly you can see if we're maximising x plus 2y, the maximum occurs at 5, 5. With value um, p is equal to x plus 2y. So p is equal to x, which is 5 plus 2 of these which would be equal to 15. So that's quite easy to see there because you just had to check um, the values there in your um, feasible region. Okay, and so we're done in that case. Right, one more for us to try. Maybe you might want to try this yourself or um, you can just watch me go through it and take notes. So we're trying to minimize this subject to the following constraints. Okay, so we're going to have to draw each of these constraints. So, firstly, we're drawing 3x plus 5y is equal to 1,500. Um, so, 3x plus 5y is equal to 1,500. If I let x equal 0, then I'm going to get myself that 5y is that, so y must be 300. And if I let y be 0, then x must be equal to 500. So, I've got two points, 0, 300, which is here. And I could plot that with 500 against 0, which is there. Then you could do the next one. So you could do 5x plus 2y is equal to 1,000. And if I let x be 0, then y would be 500. And if I let y be 0, then x would be equal to 200. So if I plot that, 0 against 500, which would be here. And I plot this here, which is 200 against 0, which would be here. Okay, fill these in. Make sure you don't forget that. And the red one here. Like that. So I want above the lines in both those cases. So I'm going to highlight below the line that which I don't want. So let me just highlight that which I don't want below that. So I don't want any of this stuff here. I also want x and y bigger than 0, so up here. So I want to minimise x plus y. So I know that always the minimum will occur at one of the vertices. So it either occurs there, it either occurs there, or it either occurs there, the minimum. Now let's draw x plus y. Let's draw something like x plus y is equal to, I don't know, 400. So it's going to look something like this. If x is 0, y is 400, and similarly here. So let's draw that with a, this is my objective line. Like that. Okay, so where's that going to be a minimum? So is it going to be a minimum there, there, or there? Clearly you can see the minimum is going to happen here, can't you? Because that's where the uh, straight line is at the lowest. So the minimum happens at point C. So the min happens at C. Now let's, in this case, we can't use the graph to find the integer values because they're going up in uh, 20s and 25s, etc. So it's impossible. So we need to find C. So that's where these two lines intersect. So that's where the line um, 3x plus 5y, so 3x plus 5y equals 1500 intersects with 5x plus 2y equals 1000. So we want to find their intersection there. Calculator out. So we have 3, 5, 1500 and we go 5, 2, 1000. Press enter and we get 2000 over 19. 
So we get x is 2000 over 19, and we get y is 4500 over 19. Okay, so let's uh, check what those are as a uh, number. So 2000 divided by 19. It's 105.26, 105.26. And the next one's going to be 4,500 divided by 19, which is 236.84. So y is 236.84. OK, so therefore, that's where that those coordinates are there. OK, that's where those coordinates are there. Now, you can't tell by looking at it because of the scale. You can't tell where the integer values are around it. It's not easy to determine. You know you could move across an x to 106 and then maybe up or down to 2, 3, um, maybe to 2, 3, 6, maybe you might be fine, or 2, 3, 5, or 2, 3, 7. Uh, you don't know. Or maybe you could move, if, as long as you moved up to 2, 3, 7, then maybe you could move back a little bit to um, 105 or even... Uh, or 104, you, you can't tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the following values. So I'm going to check the values for the following. I'm going to, if, if my two exact values are these, right, and I want to remember I'm trying to minimize this thing, so why don't I check for x? The best I could probably hope to get for x surely is 105. Uh, if I went back a little bit and 200, that would mean I'd have to go up a little bit, so 236. Or I could try 105 and 237. Or if I went a little bit this way, it would be 106 and 236. Or 106. And... 237. Okay, so I'm going to try those values there and see which ones make that maximum. But before I do that, I just want to see if they're inside the region. It's very hard for me to tell if they're inside the region, i.e. do they satisfy 5x plus 2y is bigger than or equal to 1000? And do they satisfy 3x, the other uh, one, which is... Uh, 3x plus 5y is bigger than or equal to 15,000. Are they in the region? Well, if I try it with this and this, okay, if I type those in, I get 997, which is not bigger, so it doesn't work here. If I type it here, I get 999, which doesn't work. But if I type it here, I get two things that work. What about in this case? If I put those into this inequality there, Uh, well, I don't need to because it's failed one constraint, actually. I don't need to check those. Now it's whether these work here. This one doesn't tend to work because I get 1498 when I plug that in and that in there. But this one does work. So this is the only one. 106 and 237 is going to be uh, my integer value, the closest place to this. So the closest place to this would be as follows. Okay, so therefore my integer solution... is going to be 106, 237, with value minimise p equal to x plus y, minimise p equals x plus y, and we would get ourselves p is equal to 343, and we're done. So that is my answer with integer values. Hope you found that video useful.